Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly! On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator, and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start! Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa! I can hardly stay on my feet! Red Mechanical! Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilot skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done team! Back at base the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 Search and Rescue Helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps. And the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. 
And as you can see, as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here down through the ramp itself off the aircraft into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay this is the cockpit of the helicopter there are two pilots one sits here in this chair and the other one sits on the other side these are the controls to fly the helicopter this one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards and this one moves it up and down and then there's two pedals down on the floor as well and that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens and then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Thanks very much to the amazing team here at the Coast Guard base. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at the Hoylake Lifeboat Station where I'm going to go sailing on this huge lifeboat behind me. Lifeboats are very important boats because they are life-saving boats. They rescue people who are in trouble out at sea. And look! This massive tractor is used to take the boat down to the beach and launch it into the sea. Just look at those caterpillar tracks. But the lifeboat wouldn't be any use without the amazing crew that sail her and look after her. Here come the crew now to get ready for launch. These crew members are real life superheroes who give up their free time to save people who are in trouble at sea. Today they're doing a training exercise. Look at the lifeboat coming out of the station now. The tractor is pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Those caterpillar tracks are perfect for travelling along the sandy, muddy beach. The crew are also launching a hovercraft today, which can travel on land and sea by floating around on a cushion of air. These huge fans on the back are what pushes the hovercraft along. And it's very, very noisy. Here comes the lifeboat and the tractor. The tractor can go deep into the water to launch the lifeboat smoothly into the sea. The trailer tilts and the boat just slides off. Here we go. We're out at sea. This Shannon class lifeboat can go really fast so that they can get to people in trouble as quickly as possible. This is Andy. He's the coxswain, which means he's in charge of the lifeboat today. And this is Matt, the deputy coxswain and driver of the boat. What are you doing now, Andy? Now we're going to do a man overboard exercise. What will happen is one of our guys will go in the water now and then we'll pick them up. This brave member of the crew has volunteered to get in the cold water so that the rest of the crew can practice how to pull somebody out again. On the boat! They use a special harness and ropes to pull him out as quickly and safely as possible. Just look at how the crew all work together as a team to rescue him. Do you want to have a look inside the lifeboat? Come on, Andy's going to give us a quick tour. So the first seat we come to is a crew seat or a doctor's seat. So if we have to take a doctor out, the doctor would sit there. Then we've got Alistair sitting here. 
he's the navigator today so he's keeping us safe and in deep water as we come further back we've got the coxswain seat so the coxswain sits in the middle of the boat and he's able to look at everything that's going on around the boat alongside the coxswain we have the mechanic seat he's looking after the engines and he has all the controls he needs for uh, for operating anything we need during the journey out to rescue someone we've got the radar seat the radar is a, is a great piece of equipment. The radar will see in the dark or it'll see through fog when, uh, when we can't see anything. And then we have the helmsman seat. This is where the, the lifeboat's driven from. At the minute, there's no one sitting in here because the lifeboat's getting driven from uh, on deck. Thanks for the tour, Andy. The tractor's waiting for us on the beach, ready to tow the boat back up to the station. Well, uh, Matt, we're about to hit the beach. You better slow down. Uh, Matt? Ah! Oh, ah, we're okay. Ah, I see, that was supposed to happen. The lifeboat's very strong and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. Now the tractor can come along and tow the boat up and onto the trailer. As well as the crew on the boat, there is also a shore crew who make sure that the launch and recovery go smoothly. Wow, that's like magic. The trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. A long day at sea, now it's time to head back. But the lifeboat's all dirty and the tractor and tracks. So the crew at the station all wash, scrub and clean. They really look after their rescue machine. It's very important to look after the boat so that she works for a long, long time. The crew take great pride in looking after the lifeboat because they know she's special. The crew are members of the RNLI, which is a charity where kind people donate money to buy equipment, like this beautiful boat. And it's these brave volunteers who go out and rescue people I've had a fantastic time with the crew of the RNLI Hoylake on board this incredible boat. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa, look at that! That isn't just any bus. That's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now. Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long.
Here we are back at the bus depot. I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop. Should we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen. This button controls the sign on the front of the bus, which tells people where the bus is going to. This is the ticket machine. And these screens are connected to cameras, so the driver can see the passengers upstairs. These buses travel all over the city, so they sometimes get very dirty. Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes to clean our double-decker buses. Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl. Have you ever seen a bus so tall? Look at that, clean as a whistle. Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back. And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel. When the bus is going slowly and picking up people from bus stops, the bus uses an electric motor. This makes it much quieter than other buses. Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home. But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes. Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage, they're brought here, to the Arriva Maintenance Garage, where expert mechanics can repair them. Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time. This bus is having a wheel changed. And here's another bus driving into the garage. It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit. If there's something wrong underneath the bus, a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath. Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller. When everything's fixed on the bus, it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go. I've loved learning all about double-decker buses today. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away, loosening all of that grease and grime. If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle.
There's three rollers in total. Two that clean each side of the truck. And one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away. And the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would. This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Good job, team! See you again soon! Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at Truckfest to meet a really big machine. A monster truck! Whoa! Look at the size of the wheels on that thing! One of my best friends is a monster truck, and he'd really like to meet Big Red over here. Come along, Max. Come and say hello to Big Red. Who do you think is bigger? Max or Big Red? Big Red's only built for taking passengers on a ride on his back. Look how much fun that looks. But I'm here to meet a stunt monster truck. A monster truck that crushes and jumps cars. This is Swamp Thing. A huge monster truck that weighs as much as two elephants. Swamp Thing is 14 feet tall. That's almost as tall as a giraffe. Let's take a look at Swamp Thing in action. Three, two, one, go! Wow, just look at those cars getting crushed! The monster truck is so heavy that when it lands on the cars, they are squashed as flat as a pancake. Swamp Thing is a really amazing monster machine. I wonder what it's like to drive a monster truck. This is Swamp Thing's driver, Tony. He's using his tools to perform a safety check on Swamp Thing. He's checking that all the nuts and bolts are tight, so that a wheel doesn't fall off in the middle of a show. Tony, what's it like to drive a monster truck? To drive a monster truck, for me, it's the best job in the world. I saw it on TV when I was about eight years old, and I never thought I'd be doing it for a living. Um, the feel you get in there, it's so noisy, so bumpy, but the adrenaline keeps you going. How do you get in Swamp Thing? Most people think you climb on the tyres, but I'll show you how you get in. It's fairly simple. Just walk around the side of it. Doors don't open. What you got is a climbing frame, and literally, you just climb up on the inside. And then you're straight in the seat. Okay, how do you drive a monster truck? Literally, we've got one pedal for go, and one pedal for stop. That's the starting and stopping. Now we've got to work out how to steer it. Front wheels is just like a car, turns in a steering wheel. Unlike a normal car, we've got back steering, so this turns on a joystick, left and right on the back. So who's ready to crush some cars? Tony, 
Tony built this monster truck himself, using lots of different parts, from lorries and diggers. He knows it's inside out. When Tony takes Swamp Thing around the country, he can't take it on the roads. So the monster machine has to travel in Tony's massive lorry. Swamp Thing has many of the things that a normal car would have, only they're much, much bigger. There's the wheels, the engine, the exhaust, the suspension, which gives Tony a softer landing, the brakes, the chassis, and the cabin. All of these things are designed so that Swamp Thing can jump, like this. Well, it's time to say goodbye to Tony and Swamp Thing now. Thanks very much for joining us to learn about this amazing machine. See you again soon. Bye. If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.